Watch number 12. That's Joe Namath. A standout at Alabama, Namath was courted by the Jets and the NFL Cardinals. Two representatives from the Cardinals came to my dormitory in University of Alabama, and we met up in my dorm room. And they told me they had drafted me, which I was aware of, and uh, asked me what I wanted to sign. And I told them $200,000, and they both leaned back. Oh, my goodness, you know, fell down on the bed. The guy was standing here and fell, leaned back against the wall, screaming like they were in agony. And after they calmed down a little bit, I said, there's one more thing. It's what? I said, a new car. I said, a new car, too. I said, yeah. They said, what kind of car? I said, a Lincoln Continental. <laughs> My first meeting with David A. Sonny Werblin, Mr. Werblin, and Weeb Eubank took place at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Not my dorm room, at the Beverly Hills Hotel in Los Angeles. Mr. Werblin started out, listen, I don't want to quibble over money. We want you. New York wants you. This is what I'm going to offer you. I want you to take it. $300,000 to play for the Jets. I was only thinking of two to start with, right? This 300 went up uh, a bit after we negotiated things. You know, uh, these people here, your future coach and the owner, Mr. Werblin, have uh, referred to you as the greatest football player in college this year. Uh, you haven't even put on a Jet uniform yet. Uh, you already feel a little bit of pressure? Well, uh, pressure just makes you go all the more. Uh -huh. I kind of like pressure a little bit. Mr. Werblin, you're the man that's given all this money. We don't know the exact figures, but... Uh, well, you're not going to know it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, how, 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 what kind of an estimate or what uh, can you tell us about it? Well, Bob, all I can say is that we think it's, it's a lot of money, but it's commensurate with uh, his ability. All of a sudden, they're giving this guy $400,000. Well, you know, it was a ridiculous amount of money. But it did get you looking, didn't it? I mean, it, it really put the AFL on the map. I think it was probably the smartest $400,000 that they ever spent in sports. Well, I doubt if anybody's worth $400,000 right out of college, but uh, I think Joe Namath's going to be a fine quarterback. Joe Namath, the Jets' $400,000 quarterback, passes to Bill Mathis. Joe Namath, the world's richest rookie, backpedals and takes to Bake Turner. It seems to be pretty much the general consensus that he has all those qualities that quarterbacks need to not only last long in pro football, but achieve success. He throws a good, firm ball. He has quick release, which seems to be one of the qualities that every coach is looking for in his quarterback. Courage under fire was another quality that Namath possessed. defensive lineman on any team likes to hit a quarterback because the quarterback gets hit less than anybody else and so when they do hit him uh, it gives him an extra bit of pleasure you know we, we played the Boston Patriots and I picked up the safety blitz right on my butt I couldn't even sit down it hurt so bad I, I got home and I took the worst tasting stuff I could find scotch and I drank it for five years <laughs> Although hampered by gimpy knees, Namath had guts to go along with his gunslinger reputation. It was Namath's heart, as well as his arm, that made him a commanding box office draw. Namath's name is magic, especially in New York, where record numbers are turning out, hoping to see the former Alabama star. Seldom does an athlete come along who electrifies a crowd like Namath. Off the field, Broadway Joe's brash charm and charisma won the heart of New York City. Werblin's skill for star making helped Namath the natural quarterback become Namath the national celebrity. Sonny Werblin is a man who made Joe Namath Broadway Joe. It just fit and he loved it and he was comfortable. He was a bachelor. He had that smile. You know, I mean, every girl in America loved him, you know, and he just, he just went along for the ride. There was a look about him uh, that women absolutely loved, and he had a great smile and great eyes. He also not only reached the men who thought of him as macho, but women. Thanks to Namath's magnetism, the Jets and the AFL enlarged their national profile. Preseason games were then called exhibition games, and the Jets played all six of theirs on the road. They visited cities like Scottsdale, Arizona, and Richmond, Virginia. In Allentown, PA, they played two years in a row, 
and Namath won new fans for the AFL. I remember walking into the stadium for a practice session, and the first thing I saw as I walked in was Joe Namath and Don Maynard playing catch out on the field. And, and the two players were, were standing there throwing passes probably 20 or 30 yards away from each other. And the first pass I saw Namath threw, he skidded the ball about halfway between he and Don Maynard. And as the ball skidded, it came up and hit Maynard in the letters in a tight spiral. And remember the friends and I looked at each other and said, did he want to do that? Well, the next three or four passes, he did the same thing. He was throwing the ball, skidding it about 15 yards away, and for the next 15 yards, it would come up and hit Maynard in the letters. And we were like, can you believe this guy can do this at will? In 1965, Namath was the AFL Rookie of the Year. Two years later, he became the first quarterback in history to pass for over 4,000 yards. Broadway Joe Namath and Sonny Werblin, the leading man and the impresario. Together, they helped change the fortunes of the American Football League. The NFL was trying to kill us. I mean, they were trying to put the AFL out of business. And Mr. Werblin, he made Broadway Joe the thing to get people to come to the stadium to see Joe. Mr. Werblin, being in show business, believed in the star system. He believed in filling the stands, putting people on the field that the fans could relate to, or they wanted to come see special, the star system. Mr. Werblin allowed his team, especially me, to be myself, and it was in the fishbowl in New York. You know, it was wonderful. 